The Honourable Member for Cypress Hills Grasslands. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to uh, speak to this bill this morning. And uh, like my colleague, when I was asked to speak to this bill, I decided, well, I need to go to our policy and see whether uh, this is something I can support or not. And I actually came to the opposite conclusion of him. And I guess I'll, I'll read again the, the part he read, that we believe that uh, the CBC uh, is, SRC is an important part of the broadcasting system in Canada. I think that's true. It plays a major role in, in Canadian uh, in Canada, across the country, but it says it must be a true public service broadcaster. Mr. Speaker, when I read that, I thought, what is this, what is this specifically talking about? Public service broadcaster. It doesn't say publicly owned broadcaster. It says a public service broadcaster. And we've had some comment earlier about, you know, what does this, what does this imply? Does it mean it should be covering emergency services? It should be covering cultural events, as my uh, former, um, as a colleague just spoke about. Is it about public information? I don't know that it says there that it has to be a, a publicly owned, publicly taxpayer-funded, regular broadcaster. That's not how I read that, Mr. Speaker. And it says it needs to be relevant to Canadians. As we've heard in the debate here in the House, both from the Liberal side and our side, uh, that there is some concern about whether the CBC actually is that relevant to Canadians and how relevant that it really is. And uh, so I want, to, I want to talk a little bit this morning. And I guess, Mr. Speaker, what could be more public or more, what could show the public support for a, a broadcaster more than having private shares issues, having the public decide if they want to support it or not, and those Canadians who want to step forward then can put their money uh, where they, they want it to be, they can support it, and uh, it would certainly be a test of whether the CBC has the support of the public or not uh, if this uh, bill was, was successfully passed. So I'm here to speak to Bill C-308. My colleague from Saskatoon University has brought it, brought it forward. It's going to discuss uh, CBC and its potential future, but I want to talk a little bit about the history of the CBC as well. Uh, it's been covered a little bit here, but during the 1920s in Canada, there were a number of private uh, media outlets that were being set up, particularly radio stations across Canada. And actually, it's my understanding that the Canadian National <coughs> Railways was one of those companies that was establishing uh, media outlets across Canada. They had uh, put a radio network in. They had stations in Montreal, uh, Toronto, uh, Ottawa, Moncton, Vancouver. So uh, they covered things like concerts and comic opera, school broadcasts, historical drama, the kinds of things my colleague just talked about. And uh, there was not a, at that time, not a full national program that was developed, but it was coming along. Uh, there wasn't a Royal Commission on Radio Broadcasting appointed by Mackenzie King in 1928 under the chairmanship of, uh, of John Aird. Um, I guess the concern was that some of the privately Canadian, uh, private Canadian uh, stations were falling into, into U.S. hands, and the BBC was also being held up as an example. And so there were those who felt that broadcasting uh, that uh, private broadcasting in Canada could not provide an adequate Canadian alternative to the United States. It's just interesting that we're almost 100 years later and we're still hearing some of those same discussions, those same arguments. The, uh, the private CNR radio stations, other private broadcasting was seen as to be not enough to stop uh, the idea that public ownership of media was important. Uh, there was a feeling that uh, amongst some that the taxpayer needed to contribute to this uh, media as well. The moving force within the Aird Commission was Charles Bowman, who was actually editor of the Ottawa Citizen at the time, and uh, he was one of the people who argued that pu public ownership of broadcasting was necessary to protect Can Canadians against the American penetration. Um, it would be very interesting to, uh, to kind of understand a little bit more of the, the um, politics that would have been revolving around those decisions at that time as well. Um, in 1929, just before the stock market crashed, the Aird Commission presented uh, its report and it recommended the creation of a national broadcasting company um, and they saw it as, as being set up as a public utility but it would be funded by the taxpayer and then would have a responsibility as they put it for fostering a national spirit and interpreting national citizenship. Uh, specifically actually Mr. Speaker it's very interesting it called for the elimination of private media stations. They, they said they didn't want um, any private stations at all. They thought they should be compensated but removed uh, from the, the networks that Obviously, in, uh, when the, the uh, stock market crashed, that changed a number of things. It took a while uh, for CBC Radio Canada to be set up, but it was established as a Crown Corporation in 1936. And while it may have had a mandate to foster national spirit right from the start, it's always been controversial. My colleague just talked about some of the early controversy even about that. Um, I guess the questions Canadians asked then and they ask now is, do Canadians need a taxpayer-funded broadcaster? Uh, we've heard for many years there's an argument that the CBC was necessary because Canadians did not have direct media service. And Mr. Speaker, I come from probably one of the most um, least populated areas of the country. Um, but I think actually that argument only holds true as new technology 
is being introduced and as it takes time to spread across the country. And I'd like to use a couple examples. Uh, there was radio service across Canada in the 20s and 30s and 40s. And as TV developed, obviously it took a while longer for TV to get into the rural areas. But wouldn't it have been a better argument at the time to actually spend taxpayers' money to provide the hard infrastructure so that the things like the towers and the opportunity so that people in rural communities actually had the infrastructure in order to carry those signals rather than having control of the content, which is what the, the, uh, the argument was about the CBC. Um, our first TV station was a CBC in the early 1960s, and CTV followed a few years later, and it was interesting, so did uh, stations from Montana. So even uh, we were served by five national broadcasters in the southwest corner of Saskatchewan in what many would have considered the back of beyond. And I remember CBC in, a, in, a, in those days, uh, Hockey Night in Canada was one of the first kind of programs that I remember watching on a black and white TV and you had to get fairly close to, to it. You couldn't see the puck, you could just see these grainy figures moving around. Uh, in those days I was actually a Montreal Canadiens fan and that was, that was uh, it kind of... Uh, over the years, there's a whole pile of other teams, and it kind of got diluted, but obviously the Montreal Canadiens, the Toronto Maple Leafs, uh, Bobby Orr and the Boston Bruins were all, were all people that we watched on Hockey Night in Canada. There are other things like Bonanza and Red Skelton that uh, came up from the States, and we thought they were, they were great entertainment or whatever. Uh, Front Page Challenge was another, another one that people watched. I think it was Sunday nights, right? People sat in front of the TV and watched Front Page Challenge. But times changed. Other networks were developing with private money. Uh, the, the CBC lost its uniqueness long before Front Page Challenge went off the air, I would argue, Mr. Speaker, as other commercial alternatives developed. Uh, so even in our part of the world, as I mentioned, we had um, three U.S. networks, CBC and CTV, and uh, certainly uh, there was nothing, I think, that we saw that was unique about the CBC. It was mostly the same types of shows, same types of news, just maybe at different times. Um, Hockey Night in Canada stood out as one thing that was unique, as I mentioned, but even a new CTV without the subsidy was able to develop, go head-to-head -head CBC with its taxpayer assistance. And I guess, you know, from, a, from my conservative viewpoint or whatever, I think what a shame that a company's having, trying to have to develop, has to compete uh, directly with taxpayers' money, and on the other flip side of it, the taxpayers were stuck paying for the development of a structure that was being duplicated commercially. Uh, it was just, from my perspective, Mr. Speaker, a lot of wasted money. The opportunity for change came and went without adaptation and, and guaranteeing that CBC would become more and more irrelevant. The CBC and its supporters have always tried to convince Canadians that it's some sort of national institution, but practically it never has been. The only thing that's made it national is that taxpayers across this country have been stuck paying the bill. And I guess the notion that it provides some sort of unbiased uh, Canadian content is disproven even as recently as I think last week when two provinces were already taking great exception to uh, this latest uh, history project that's, doing, that's, that's going on. Um, second example, I guess, of this failure, I would think, was evident yesterday. I went on the, uh, the online website, and amongst dozens of headlines on there, I couldn't find one, not one, Mr. Speaker, that was critical in any way of the present government. Now, that seems to be quite a change from a couple of years ago. There was not a single critical headline on their website, in spite of the fact we have a government that's mired in corruption, following a budget that has been universally panned and in the midst of an attempt to unilaterally change the rules in the national legislature. Now, I don't know where all of their investigative reporters went to. Perhaps they've left, but I doubt it. I think it's just that they actually can't find anything to criticize. Uh, I had a constituent call me a couple of weeks ago, disgusted by some of the content he saw on, on TV uh, early in the evening. At 8 o'clock at night, his 7-year-old son was with him, and he said that was completely inappropriate content for, for young people, and uh, contacted the CBC, and they actually told him, well, actually, you didn't watch it. It isn't shown at that time of night. So what you thought you saw, you didn't see. That was their way of dealing uh, with his complaint about, about uh, content. And so, um, you know, Mr. Speaker, I don't think that the CBC is actually uh, listening to Canadians at all. Uh, the establish second the establishment of the CBC meant right from the beginning that the taxpayers were paying the bill. And right from the beginning, I would argue the cost was just too high to be justified. It still is in this day of media expansion. Uh, let's talk about the taxpayers. We sit here uh, with 100 or 200 TV channels on most of our televisions. We have 1,000 or 2,000 internet channels, Mr. Speaker. We have instant news from all over the world. We have movies and videos from 
dozens of sources. We have cable TV with the capacity to charge for what people use, but burdened with having to carry unpopular subsidized channels. And we have private companies delivering professional production and news services who are paying their own way. In the middle of all this, Mr. Speaker, a $1 billion plus annual bill to the taxpayer for a provider that no longer provides anything that is unique and a provider that many Canadians believe fails to provide a balanced and comprehensive uh, view of issues. If you take a look at the mandate, Mr. Speaker, I'd argue that they're not successfully addressing that. And we've had a number. Oh, Mr. Speaker, I see my time's already up, and so I would be glad to conclude. Mr. Speaker, I believe it's unnecessary that the CBC be supported by government inter intervention in order for it to continue to exist. This should have been done tax uh, decades ago. The taxpayer has borne the burden uh, for many years longer than it should have. It's time to make this a, a commercial entity. Let it compete directly with its competitors. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.